All my paintings are egg brown linen. I've been, I got stuck to egg, eggs and pigments <laughs> very, very early. Of course, I had to try out other uh, media like oil and acrylic. But I really like this, uh, it's a tactile way when you're standing there stirring and stirring the pigments into the egg and the uh, lin, uh, linseed oil and I like the smell. I like the movement of the pigments and I like them when they dissolve in the fluid. Some pigments are stubborn, they don't want to, to, uh, to deal medium so you have to help them a little bit. And uh, so that's how I've been working for years. I usually, usually don't draw the elements on the uh, canvas before I start painting. Sometimes on the big ones because I always paint when they're lying down, lying here on the big table here. And with small ones it's not uh, problematic because you have the control over a small one when you're looking down like that. But the big one I sometimes mark where these different elements are supposed to be. So maybe I should have a look out on the scrap metal heap. Do you like that? Yeah. yeah. See where I'm standing. In all these windows from the studio over to the living area in my loft, you can see the scrap metal. Here. So, this is sort of the first thing I'm doing in the morning almost, going here, over here to look how they are uh, working. Also, these barrels, I made a whole series with barrels. I don't have them out now to show you. But uh, they are in the show at Sideshow now, at Sideshow Nation uh, show. So I, I pick out what, what's interesting me. I also have a series of the big men where I, where I have been painting how they are moving. So this scrap metal heap has been great inspiration. In a way, I'm just doing what I've always been doing, uh, like I showed in the catalogs from Berlin and Norway. I pick out from my surroundings and uh, pragmatic way. I'm not building any myths or stories. So I pick out from my surroundings, take what is interesting me, and add or subtract and uh, fragment it. And um, that's it. You know, I'm originally Norwegian, I've been living in Berlin for more than 30 years, studied there and stayed. Uh, but when I'm in Norway, of course, there's a lot of nature. So I've done this with mountains and islands and <laughs> whatever I see. And I, I was in the work, sort of, was invited to Brazil some years ago. And, well, then I took the Brazilian landscapes and the floors they had in their buildings lots of tiles. So, yeah, I take what's surrounding me. I never have a problem to find anything. I don't need to think a lot. Just look around and I see something everywhere. When you came here, you actually did a, a series of the landscape around here. Yeah, the, the city landscape. Yeah, I made a whole series of uh, Bushwick Skyline. And um, it's the view from my windows. Also, and of course, some people will say, well, is this a beautiful view? And I, I do really think it's a beautiful view. I think it's an exciting view. I love this view. And this openness as well. I mean, that's the difference between uh, Brooklyn and Manhattan. Uh, you have the sky. And you don't need to be high up to have the sky. This is third floor. And I have a lot of sky and skyline, which I really appreciate. I love this skyline. I made, I think, 
yes, uh, about 10 big paintings as well, and uh, 25 small ones, and watercolors, and temper on paper, and the skyline. Maybe you want to have a look at the skyline? There's sure. one, one perfect skyline here, standing on the, this one. It's from that direction, out from the studio windows. See this one? It's also the Bushwick skyline. And if you go out of this window, you actually see it. You see that roof, the black roof. But I decided to paint that green because I like the green copper better on the big, big surface here. It's this view. And here are then smaller bushwick skyline. So I, I work in series, mostly between 20 and 30 paintings, and combine with big ones and small ones. And these are verticals and horizontals, and sometimes all of them are horizontal. So, um, and I also combine them in shows, but uh, it's sort of an installation from one series. And I started with that early on. The academy I studied in Berlin, West Berlin. And it always became more. I never painted one painting. It was always going on and on, sort of changing forms, changing colors. So it was it always turned out to be a series. So work group of works fitting together from the thematic, from the color. And uh, So that's what I, I'm still doing. Now, why did you choose egg tempera to use as your medium as opposed to just regular oil or acrylic paint? Um, well, like I, I mentioned, I sort of got stuck to it because I like the the movements of the pigments and the fluid and all this sort of more handicraft part of it. Uh, and well, of course, I had to try out other other uh, media as well. And uh, oil to me, it was too shiny. Uh, I didn't like it that much, and I tend to work also with transparencies. I have a many series where I go over and over and over again, and with oil you have to thin it out with turpentine, which is really not very pleasant to work with. So mm, egg temper can thin it out with water. So it fitted also to my way of working, and acrylic I always found. It's too dry, it was sort of more too synthetic. And uh, I mean, you got very good acrylic paints now, but when I started, I well, the offer we had then, I didn't like it. And the advantage you have also with pigments, if you buy very good pigments, you decide the mixture. If you buy ready-made uh, colors, uh, it's often stretched with white or something, so that if you mix a yellow with a red, you don't get a bright orange. But if you know your pigments and you know the strength of the color in your pigments, you know exactly which pigments you shall use, which yellow and which red will give a brilliant orange. So you have more control over your colors. 
And another thing which I also like, I have the feeling that the surface after it's painted, it is as if the pigments, they are not so close into the medium. So, uh, so they have sort of an extra life. So they change with the light and uh, um, Yeah, I, I have a feeling I'm not forcing the color so much. They they have the freedom to choose, and you have you have uh, stubborn pigments, difficult pigments. They refuse to dissolve, so you have to uh, to persuade them <laughs> to dissolve, or you have to live with it that is sort of lying on the surface. So yeah. It uh, suited me. And I mean, you can also you can also use it fat. I've been doing that as well. Then you skip the water, you skip the white in the egg, you use only the yolk. So then it's getting real fat, heavy. So working with pigments and eggs, you have very big scale of possibilities. From very, very, very thin to very, very thick. You think you might have any... Uh any time you could show show me some of that? And yeah, show how me how to, to work with that? it? Yeah. Yes, of course, of course. That would be yeah. very cool. Yeah. yeah, I have some people here who say, well, how do you do that? No, of course. Okay. Yeah, of course. You want to see my egg? Or would you like to see that now? The sure. Yeah? Sure. Should we go you again? Yeah. And you know, it's, uh, it's like in the kitchen. You have to keep it in the fridge. If not, it starts stinking. It starts smelling. So you make the mixture, and I usually make so much that I know that I will use it for uh, during some days. And you see here, it's it's also separated. Mm -hmm. You can see that. Of course, you always have to shake it like that. So now it's good. Mmm, it smells good. Could you live with that? It's not bad. Uh, yeah, I like that. It's okay. And then you take it, uh, you mix it with the pigments. I'll show you. So, this is how you do it. I just take a small amount now. Take a nice color. So that you... Let's get some of the Berlin blue. That's one of my favorites. Color is nice, huh? You get color? Yeah. And you just pour over there. And then you just stir it. This is uh, dissolving perfectly. It's a very uh, pleasant pigment. It does exactly what you expect it to do. Mix with a egg. So, you can try it out here. This is a paper. dark it got. It's beautiful. Huh? It's almost like black. Yeah, it really is. But when you do like this, you see it's this blue. It's a Berlin blue. It's a pigment from Berlin. So you can so you can only pretty much get that in Berlin? In yeah, Germany? Yeah, you don't get it anywhere else. It was invented in Berlin in the end of eighteenth century. And it was sort of a cheap uh, substitute for ultramarine because that was expensive. And it was used a lot. And I just discovered in a plain painter's shop uh, for painting walls and so on, not for art. And it was in big buckets down in the basement. And I saw the 
Prussian blue, and they had collected all the blues in one corner, which was practical, probably. So you saw the Prussian blue, dark ultramarine, and Berlin blue. And I saw the difference between the Prussian blue and the Berlin blue. Berlin blue is more red. Uh, Prussian is a bit more yellowish or greenish. You don't see that. So I, that's something else I got stuck to, the Berlin blue. So I made a whole series of paintings called Berlin blue. And I took it with me over here. So it's also in my paintings here. The first series I painted here uh, was also called Berlin Blue Abstract Walking, where I used this Berlin Blue figure over here, brought it over here, and only had a vertical and a horizontal stripe, sort of the classical view on New York, like Mondrian, so everybody thought like this, this, and this. Not as a landscape, but as a cityscape. That was my way of combining the two cities. So, are these are these like sketches for? future paintings? Um, I don't really know. There are sketches from a visit I had to uh, there's a, uh, John's Beach, yeah, a bit outside the city, and I was there with a friend, and so I, and I took photographs there from my shadow on the beach, that's why it's, it's a long stretch. And then I made these watercolors, but I'm not sure if they will... Maybe. I have, I have them hanging here. I have to look at them. So not everything I'm sketching or uh, picking up is turning into a series. Sometimes yes, yeah, sometimes no. And then I can even pick it up after some years again. So I'm not sure. I, I, I like it. I like them. Maybe, maybe it would be nice to combine them with the horizon. John's Beach Horizon. Yeah, I don't know yet, but they are hanging around. Yeah. <laughs>